Good afternoon and welcome to yet another edition of Government in Transition, a special program brought to you by the People's Progressive Party Civic. I have the honor of having some discussions this afternoon with first our uh, PPP executive, Ms. Gail Deshera, and former finance minister, Bishop Juan Edgel. I welcome you both to today's program. Well, good morning, well, thank everybody, you. and thank you for listening to our program. We hope we'll be able to enlighten you on a number of developments that have been taking place. Okay, I, I have not had an opportunity, Gail, and I'm going to lead off with you. I have not had an opportunity to speak with you on these and many other issues recently. Uh, our electoral impasse is currently at the state, at the, at the doorstep of the Caribbean Court of Justice. As we enter the week where the CCJ and the nation eagerly anticipates a ruling by the CCJ, uh, where do we go from here? I, I'm, again, I'm gonna ask you first about expectations and where do we go from here? Uh, this also, I would like you to place against a backdrop of commitments being made and, and, same, and same commitments being uh, worked against, and I'm referring specifically to the APNU FC presidential candidate, who has been very duplicitous in his commitments, uh, in his utterances and his actions, uh, utterances versus actions, very, very conflicted. Gail? Yeah, good morning, Michael and Bishop again. Um, I think last week there were some really interesting developments in terms of the CCJ single day hearing and the ICJ Guyana going before the ICJ in relation to the Guyana-Venezuela border controversy, and also the meeting of the heads of government on Friday. In relation to the CCJ, obviously we're waiting for the ruling on Wednesday. And we have a clear indication from the CARICOM, uh, the previous, the former chairperson of the heads of government and the present, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, that they will not uh, tolerate um, any situation where Guyana would be swearing in um, a, a government that is not based on the certified uh, recount statements that were uh, that were what was concluded on June the 9th. So that I think the are very clear indications uh, globally, internationally, regionally of, of the status of Guyana in their mind and what the the GCOM and the president. Granger expected to do. At the same time last week, you had Mr. Granger making these statements that shows that despite all of his things about abiding by the constitution and law, in fact, he is prepared to, to violate the constitution once again. In fact, um, a point I just want to emphasize is that we've talked about the Granger administration being a caretaker one from the time of the no confidence motion. But from the time of the elections, the uh, Granger administration is really in a holding mechanism only. It isn't even really a caretaker government. And I know Bishop has a lot of information on that and what they've been doing. But, but Granger's position that he's supporting um, uh, low and fields fraudulent results, and he'd be willing to accept those, does uh, cause some concern. If the CC, whichever way the CCJ rules, Whichever way it rules, the point is that we'll be back at GCOM with Claudette Singh having to stand by her position and what she put in writing to the CEO that it has to be the recount results. Just an aside, um, yesterday in the Trinidadian newspaper, The Guardian, the APNU put in an entire one page ad um, advising why the CCJ could not have jurisdiction in the case. A rather desperate move by APNU to do that while the case uh, is still pending to hear what the CCJ will say. And so it could be viewed in many ways by the judges themselves as uh, something that shouldn't be done. But actually, they are Purely unethical. Purely unethical. Absolutely. And I mean, the court did not take kindly to um, a number of things that have happened in relation to the statement by Sir, Sir Alexis, nor uh, Justice Anderson, who withdrew from the case. So we, we the APNU is trying to feel that they can influence the CCJ by this form of um, 
bullyism in a sense. But my position is, and, and the party's position is, is whichever way the court goes, they dismisses, they, and say they don't have jurisdiction or they have jurisdiction and rule that the, the GCOM will have to do the next step, which is to convene a meeting and order Lowenfield to provide the results. Now, even Mr. Granger says that um, the, the chairman has the results already. That is Lowenfield's uh, fraudulent results of June 23rd. And uh, our information is that the chairperson never received that, that she refused to take it because there was a stay of execution by the CCJ. So there are a number of things that will be happening. Wednesday is certainly going to be a day that I think all of Guyana and many organizations in the world will be looking at. And immediately after thereafter, obviously the concerns that Granger isn't going to accept anything but the uh, low and field results. And therefore we'll have to see how that unfolds based on GCOM's position and what the chairman does. And hopefully she sticks with her position that she took on June the 16th. Uh, Bishop, on, on this issue, and uh, Gail touched on it a bit, the reality of the caretaker status of the incumbent administration, uh, more or less uh, should be taking the posture of a holding pattern, but rather mm -hmm. has been operating as though it's business as usual. Yeah. Uh, your views on this, Bishop? Well, my, my concern to it's not business as usual, except that Granger has elevated himself into messiahship, uh, thinking that Guyana cannot function without David Granger. So he inserts himself in a manner as if he is legitimate, lawful, and constitutional. When he is not, the actions that are being undertaken by the Granger administration, that de facto uh, fallen, defeated government that has since been voted out of office on March 2nd, uh, is unacceptable, expending large sums of money, making serious appointments, entering into major contracts, and all of these things. This is unheard of. This is despicable. It's vulgar. It is something that should have never happened. People in the free world frown upon such behavior. People who embrace the rule of law and democracy see this as a slap in the face of everything that is decent. And to say that the gentleman who does this, do it with a straight face, saying I've never broken the constitution, I've never broken any law, I'm doing everything that is right. And so that lingering term that has been used, the sanctimonious gangster, keeps playing and playing and playing and playing. As a matter of fact, he and his team of the likes of the Harmons and the Walla Lawrence and the Trotmans and the Pattersons and the Katiyus, and we could go on and name them, they're actually injuring Guyana. And not only injuring Guyana, but they're injuring the very people who voted for them. And this is something that we should take note of because when they, on, when they undertake such posturings and such actions and they conduct themselves in such a way not only is PPPC supporters being injured and the image of Guyana being injured, but their own supporters are being injured. And I think for the sake of the people who respected them enough to vote for them, for the sake of the people who respected them enough to campaign for them. And as the man in the street would have said to me over and over, I put my belly out near these people and look how they're behaving now. Bishop, that that if, is the, the embarrassment that their own supporters are facing. But Bishop, if I may interrupt on this very topic, and it's a very interesting that you raise this particular topic, because there, I, I, um, I shudder to think that there is a paucity or there's a, an absence or a shortage of support base with, uh, for the APNU AFC that is void of or uh, does not possess some level of both maturity and uh, integrity. What would you say to the right thinking APNU supporters, specifically to the APNU supporters? Well, well, Michael, I'm glad that you asked because when you look at social media, which is the place the majority of Guyanese find 
an outlet to express their views. A lot of the people who were once very vocal, very, very vocal in the run up to the elections in support of Granger and his administration have either disappeared or extremely silent or very few with their words. That tells me that there is out of that 217,000 Guyanese that voted for Grange in the AP and UAFC, not all is lost. It's just a small group at the top that is criminal in their behavior for the theft of an election. It's a very few at the top who want to continue the squandermania, the rape of the treasury and the destruction of our economy for personal benefit. But the majority, and I insist, the vast majority of that 217,000 plus Guyanese who woke up on March 2nd, went to the polls, conscientiously thinking that Granger and his team is the best team for Guyana and put their X next to their symbol. They are now extremely disappointed. And Michael, while I am hearing of the statements coming from the OAS, the Commonwealth, the CARICOM, the United Nations resident coordinator, uh, the Americans, the British, the Canadians, the European Union, the private sector, the Chamber of Commerce, and all the other agencies, the PITOG, all who have spoken and have spoken directly to this situation of electoral fraud. I think the time has come for the 217,000 Guyanese to start sanctioning the AP and UAFC leadership. And how do they sanction them? By saying, clear, we're not thieves. We're not fraudsters. We are not crooks. We are Guyanese who believe in a democratic process. We voted for you. You have not won. It's time to concede. We voted for you with the expectation that you will take the reins of government. The fact of the matter is the PPPC got 233,339 votes, 15,416 more than us. Concede, give way. Let's reconcile Guyana. Let's be reasonable. Let's be rational. That 217,000 plus Guyanese must send no to the James Bonds and the Sherrod Duncan and the Christopher Jones and the Mark Benchkoff and the Rickford Burke. We will not go the way of violence. We will not break up the tongue. We will not injure people because of their political opinion. We are Guyanese. We want Guyana to go forward. So it's time for internal sanctions. It's time for the young leaders in the PNC, decent, intelligent, well-measured, well-reasoned, God-fearing people to sit together and say, this nonsense must stop. The actions of that 30 or so people at the top is making all of us look bad. It's taken us into a path of destruction. It has serious long-term consequences. For all of us, it has serious short-term consequences for all of us, and it's time for internal sanctions to come from the supporters of the APNU AFC. And that's what I think will wake up this cabal to the reality. We cannot get away with electoral fraud. We cannot steal a country. We have to come back to the middle, behave in a manner that is befitting of a democracy and obey the rule of law and let constitutional rule be restored to Guyana. So I think that is where we are. And I would like to see the internal sanctions from the young, intelligent, rational, well-measured, God-fearing, reasonable Guyanese who supported the APNU AFC at the polls to start imposing the sanctions now. Let their voices be heard. Let them start posting. Let them start writing. Let them start calling on their leaders to behave in a manner that is for the good of Guyana, putting Guyana first. Gail, Gail the word sanctions, uh, it's a very frequently used word in recent times. Uh, in many cases, in many instances, it's a very frequently uh, misused word, especially uh, 
when mischief is enforced, more specifically on social media. One of the things that has been peddled uh, by the propaganda machinery of the APNU AFC is that the, PP, the People's Progressive Party has been asking for sanctions on Guyana. Absolutely untrue. I'm going to give you an opportunity to refute such spurious things. Gail. Well, but let me just um, go back a little bit. When the uh, uh, AFC brought the no confidence motion in 2014, uh, August, it is Mr. Granger and others who went on camera, on this footage, to show Granger calling for sanctions if the PPP did not uh, proceed to, to hold elections. And in fact, uh, in the period of prorogation, this was Granger and Greenwich, by the way, calling for sanctions against Guyana, that Guyana was violating, the President Ramatar was violating the constitution. We're here today now where we have witnessed, um, you know, what is it, 16 months, 17 months since the no confidence motion, um, 122 or 23 days since the uh, election on March the 2nd. And Granger has done everything possible in his uh, cabal to prevent the true and accurate results of those elections being held. He knows the results of the SOPs. And in fact, in 2015, Granger is the one who said that the SOPs must be statements of poll of what must be used to find the results of the election. Even in 2015, where Lowenfield is the one that said that a number of the SOPs were fraudulent, that they weren't the same paper, that they were they, they were paper that wasn't uh, used when they were printing the, the statements of poll, um, et cetera. And yet, despite that, Mr. Lowenfield, as the chief elections officer and the chairman, Dr. Serge Valley, are in the media quoted as saying that these things were immaterial and would not have changed the results. In fact, this the phrase that was quoted from them was that nothing would interfere with the victory of the APNU AFC elections. And I went back to 2015 to talk about now in the sense that here is a government that has overstated time, it is squatting in government illegally at this point in terms of everyone knows the results and Granger will not accept it. You have a person who is duplicitous, not only sanctimonious, but duplicitous. In, and I think he believes he's reached a point in delusion that he, rec he believes his own lies. But the fundamental issue is he doesn't want to give up. And so when you watch what the international observers, the different countries have been saying in international bodies, they started out very softly in the beginning after March 7th and the 14th and saying, you know, let's go to a recount, let's see what happens, but we will not accept the results from the fraudulent region for um, count or tabulation. They have progressed from that, which was around March 14th to what is this week where you have the governments and other countries now saying that the recount must be used to uh, swear in a government and anything else is illegitimate and going further and saying that there would be serious consequences. The world today is not accepting rogue governments and rogue, rogue countries or pariah countries, despite all the contradictions that exist internally in many countries to do with democracy. The, the OES, the CARICOM, the Commonwealth are not going to accept a rogue state. And so sanctions can take, as we said, many forms. And so and we've said uh, various times here, in terms of visas being withheld or revoked for persons in the APNU AFC administration and in GCOM, uh, that is probably the first stage. The second would be even more strenuous sanctions in terms of trade and investment and even access to our oil money, which I believe is in the US Federal Reserves. If we see that that is where in Venezuela, they're trying to access their gold from the Bank of England and where the court in England has ruled against that. So that there are very serious consequences. They start out mild and they become more serious. The point is that the AP and UFC led by Granger seems to be oblivious to this and, and do not care. And I go back to, to quote from Dominique Gaskin, who was in a sense, is the son-in-law of Granger, a former minister, a leader of the AFC, who made it clear that one, 
that APNU was deliberately led by Granger, deliberately misleading the APNU supporters, deliberately misleading them and, and giving them expectations that were totally untrue. And in addition to that, he said that the Granger led administration would not give up power, that they would hold on to the reins of government as long as possible. So that if by the time we come to GCOM making the decision as they should in relation to the certified recount results, then we may obviously be in a situation where APNU doesn't accept or Granger doesn't accept the results. Obviously be forced to eat his words then because he's the one that said, I will abide by the, the declaration of the chairman. Of course, he put in the caveat that I will only, I will accept it of course, if all these uh, irregularities have been removed, voter impersonation, dead migrant people, and of course supporting um, low and fields, 115,000 people being disappeared. But yet, I, I think I should, uh, I, I want to interrupt, uh, especially on this specific point. Yeah. You, see, you seem pretty much optimistic. Uh, this is also a gentleman who said, who referred to, as, who referred to the CARICOM observation mission to the recount yeah. as the most important interlocutor in the process. And uh, then one is off into the sunset or, or behind closed doors after the, the CARICOM observation team reports. Uh, you, you seem more optimistic than I am With about what? the sincerity of Mr. Granger. No, I don't. I have no. I've written. I've written pointing out about his messianic behavior and his paranoid delusional. And the, the editor removed the word paranoid and left delusional in. So I have no um, I have no misgivings about what Mr. Granger represents and what he's capable of doing. Except I do believe that, that and the risks are great. I believe that Mr. Granger can very well, even if GCOM agrees to the to 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 declare based on the recount results that there's no saying that Granger will accept. And I'm using Dominic Gaskin's words to say that they won't. But I believe that the the in relation to sanctions, were that to happen, there is a local dimension, what will be the response of the Guyanese people, and there's an international regional dimension, which you asked about, and that's the sanctions. The road can be a very rocky and, and quite a dangerous one. But Granger, um, I don't hold personally a lot of um, hope that Granger will suddenly wake up uh, and say, let GCOM go ahead and do what's right. I don't hold that. But I do believe that the forces that are against him are much larger and greater. And were he to go in that direction, the we, we as a country and he will face consequences. You touch on a very important issue, however, the issue of being duplicitous. And uh, duplicity is not only in and within, in a boat and within that one individual, that is uh, the, the leader of the Afno AFP coalition. Uh, we've seen uh, individuals and factions within the coalition. Uh, we've seen the duplicity statements coming from individuals within the APNU SE coalition. I'll ask both you and Bishop to, to speak a bit about this. Mr. Granger says one thing, uh, the PR arm of the APNU SC says one thing, Joseph Harmon says another thing, Rickford Burke says one thing, Nicolet Henry says one thing, Nicolet Henry sues Rickford Burke. It seems like a mad out. Well, there are two ways to look at that, um, Michael. I prefer to choose the way that says there's a method to that madness. Yeah. There is a method to that madness. If you notice, when Granger wanted to get his bully statement out, that he is not giving up, so to speak, he didn't choose Enrico Wolford or Gordon Mosley. He went on Ben Scott, Mark Ben Scott. A particular following takes to Ben Scott radio. And he wanted to speak to that crowd. Cheryl Duncan and Christopher Jones on a daily basis speaks to a particular crowd. Rickford Burke, who lives overseas, speaks to a particular crowd. James Bond, when he goes into Sophia and all boys, Tongue and Tiger Bay and East and West Rongveld, he's speaking to a particular crowd. 
And that is why there's a method to the madness. So you want to cuss out the CARICOM heads of government, you put Joseph Harmon, and then you come out and say, that for you, it's not interfering. It's a way of keeping good and the sweet while cussing at the same time. There's a method to this madness. But Michael, permit me to say this. The vendor who plies their trade in Georgetown, New Amsterdam, Linden, Nana Regina, Bartica, or, or, or Mabaruma, the minibus driver, the bus, the, the taxi driver, the barber, the hairdresser, the school teacher, the soldier, the police, the nurse, all of these people must know something. David Granger leaves office. He has a pension package that allows him to get seven eighths of the salary of the sitting president as a pension. Water, electricity, telephone, medical expenses pay. Security. Security, maid, Stop. gardener, and, and, and the whole works continue. He is set for life. He is destroying your income. He is destroying your future while his is secure. And that is where the sanctions, the internal sanctions got to come. People got to rise up and start saying, we have to hustle to make a living. But you and your guys said, Joseph Harmon, he will have a pension that is almost three quarter or seven eighths of his million dollar salary depending on how many years he has spent in parliament. Nagamutu will get a pension that is seven eighths of his highest parliamentary salary as prime minister, which is gonna be about 1.2 or $1.3 million a month, plus other benefits. These people have their lives set. The ordinary man who got a loan and is trying to complete his house or to pay back for his car is struggling. And these people are using them as pawns to get along with their own agenda to further enrich themselves, their family, and their cronies. Look and see whose children got scholarships. Look and see who's getting the contracts. Look and see who's getting the lands that are being given away. Look and see who's getting the big jobs. Are not the 200,000 people who got up and went and voted for them? It's a small group, friends, family, and cronies. And that is why supporters of the PNC, activists of the PNC, young Turks of the PNC, APNU, AFC grouping, must now come to a place to realize, hey, we ain't taking this using any more. Because the sanctions will come to people personally, but then when we can't get access to the oil money, which means the things that the oil money should have done for infrastructural development, economic development, to create great opportunities are gonna be stifled and withheld because of the illegal, unlawful, unconstitutional behavior of Granger and a few. And that is why I believe we are thankful, we are extremely grateful for the positions of our international development partners, whether our international financial institutions, governments or organizations, the positions they have taken are commendable and they are laudable. But it's time for the people of Guyana to recognize you can't be hoodwinked. Don't let nobody mama guy you anymore. I'm using all the local terms where the man in the street could uh, understand. They can't keep pampersetting themselves and punishing all of us. We got to be able to get up and do something. We got to say to them, so I think there needs to be a loud shout. There needs to be a loud chorus coming from the young people, those single moms who are battling to get their children to school and keep food on the table, those men who are trying to service their loans to keep their mortgage and their car payments going. They need to be a loud chorus. We've had enough. It's 120 plus days and counting. Granger and group, you got to go. Look what Ramatar and his group did in 2015. They gave up and they came back and they won. You need to give up, reorganize yourself, get your act together. And if the people want you back, they will vote you back in. Democracy must be at work. And that is what I'm saying. They have their bread well buttered with cheese, ham, bacon, and even a piece of macaroni pie with some sausages 
on the plate. And there are people out there who are still scrunching to get some bread on their table. And this is why we need to have action from the grassroots, the ordinary people, the supporters, the diehards, the people who nail up their flags, the people who wave the banners at the rallies, the people who joined the trucks and shouted, who wore the jerseys, are the ones who are feeling the squeeze and will continue to feel the squeeze. And as a brother, I'm saying to other brothers and sisters, please don't support something that will bring harm to you. I'm saying to all my brothers and sisters in Linden, in Buxton, in Golden Grove, in South Georgetown, in Virgin Nugent, and in Amstel, and Port Troy, and, 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 and wherever, in Etika, and, and Litchfield, don't support something that is going to hurt you. Look out for yourself. Look out for your family. You have a group of people that you believed in. They have lied to you. They have disappointed you. They have let you down. It's time to let them go and let Guyana go forward. And that's uh -oh. the movement where we need to be going. On that note, Bishop, uh, our program is almost at an end. Uh, in closing, Gail, I'll ask you to speak directly to the Guyanese. Well, I want to support uh, Bishop in what he said that Clearly, the, I believe and always have believed that the Guyanese are democratic minded. They want democracy. They want the free will to vote for who they want. And I think too that the PNC in, and historically has been one to try to mislead uh, their supporters and have succeeded over the decades by playing on a rule, a divide and rule position, particularly using ethnicity. In this case, in this time, the fact that we've had 120 odd days of waiting um, and it has been peaceful, our people have been extraordinarily disciplined. And I mean our people, meaning all our people, not just those who supported the People's Progressive Party Civic. The fact that APNU so far has been able to have mass uh, activities is something we need to watch. It's an indication of people are frustrated and, and want to get on with their lives, or is it just that um, APNU is not the APNU it was in 2015? I believe strongly that the majority of Guyanese, whether they voted for APNU or PPP or any other party, want this thing to be over. But they don't want it to be over anyhow. They want it to be over in the right way. They want, they are more and more recognizing that the recount has to be used. APNU AFC was defeated twice, actually three times. It was defeated as a government on December 21st, 2018. They were defeated on March the second elections and they were defeated on the end of the recount, at the end of the recount on June the 9th. And I think now that the doubting Thomases, even among their own supporters now recognize that, how is it they've been found uh, defeated twice, and where are these other things coming from that Grange himself is leading? So I think that, that, and I hope that the majority of Guyanese will stick by what they've been doing all this time and remaining faithful to the whole belief that democracy will prevail and that the, the rightful winner, the winner who won at the March 2nd and the recount will become the government of Guyana and that they want to get back on to their lives. Everything has been paused even before the elections and since the elections and, and exacerbated by COVID-19. And people are really, really suffering in this country uh, at all levels, in the interior, in the vendors, the taxi drivers, minibus drivers, businesses, everywhere, things are getting worse and worse. And so the for our supporters, those who support the PEPs, to say to stay disciplined, to stay vigilant, and we will keep in contact. And for those who are APNU supporters, as Bishop said, that you can't, the APNU and Granger have misled you, have misinformed you. And it is time now, whether silently or actively, to allow the democratic process in our country to prevail and to allow that the rightful winner, the People's Progressive Party Civic, will become the government and we will do the social programs and the housing programs that are not discriminatory, that everyone will benefit as we go along. And of course, we have to repair an economy that is severely damaged by the APNU AFC government. So I'm saying to people, 
for those who who want to see Erfan Ali uh, sworn in. Don't give up, stay strong. And for those who are, are beginning to wonder what were they really supporting when they voted for Granger, to start thinking very carefully about where is Guyana going and what it will be for them, not Granger and not the cabal that Bishop spoke about. People's Progressive Party Executive Gail Deshera uh, former finance minister, Bishop Juan Edgel, I thank you both for being a part of this program. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. I am Michael Gordon. You. You've been God watching you Government in Transition. Uh, stay tuned for, for another program. My colleague, Edward Lane, will be on at 8 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>